Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I am the Traveling Man, and I just finished the longest cruise that I've ever taken in my entire life on board the Celebrity Apex. We cruised all over the Eastern Mediterranean from Cyprus to Israel. It's my second time on Celebrity Apex, which I've often called my favorite cruise ship at sea. But has this longer voyage changed my opinion? There were some things that happened that, well, we just need to discuss it. So this is my official review of my Celebrity Apex 12-night Eastern Mediterranean cruise experience. Well, as I said, this was my second time sailing on board Celebrity Apex. Celebrity Apex is the second newest celebrity ship. Of course, the brand newest one is the Celebrity Beyond, which I was on. Uh, back in May and June of this year. So if you've not seen the videos that I did on board Celebrity Beyond, make sure you go back and check those out. And I will actually link that playlist right here so that you can click there and get into that and see some of those videos. But this was my second time on Apex up until this cruise. It was my favorite celebrity cruise. So I was really curious to see uh, selling it again if I would still like it as much as I did the first time. I think I liked it so much the first time because it was my first Celebrity Cruises experience. So coming from other cruise lines to suddenly being on board this this magnificent like modern luxury cruise ship uh, that the Celebrity Edge class of ships offer it was just tremendous. So I was really curious to see with 12 days on board if I would still love it as much. So we're gonna walk through my cruise experience review. We're gonna do this using my steps process uh, and if you've not watched a cruise ship review I've done before I have five steps. The S stands for ship the T stands for taste, or we're talking about food, of course. I'll talk about food a little bit very briefly here, but I will do a more in-depth food review video, which will follow this one. It'll come, I don't know exactly when, but uh, make sure you subscribe so that you can watch that video when it comes out. But I will walk mill through mill, all the mills I had on board Celebrity Apex in that video. So you'll want to come back and check that out. The E stands for entertainment, and we had 12 days of entertainment, so a lot to talk about there. The P is for ports, and wow. There are some great ports on this cruise, going to the Eastern Mediterranean, going to Israel. Uh, I can't wait to talk about that. And then the S is for service or staff or crew. We'll talk about that. And of course, Celebrity is supposed to have the best service, some of the best service at sea. I say it's the best service I've ever experienced on cruise ships before, but did it hold up? We're going to look into all that as I go through my review of the Celebrity Apex. And we're going to start with the S. The S is for ship. And like I said, Celebrity Apex going into this cruise was my favorite cruise ship. Had you asked me, I would have said, yeah, it's the best ship at sea. But I'll go ahead and spoil everything and tell you that Celebrity Apex is still my favorite cruise ship. There's just something that just feels like home to me when I get on board Celebrity Apex. I, I don't know. I just love the ship and the 12 nights being on board it. I still feel the very same way about it, and even more so now. So the ship, of course, a very beautiful ship. Uh, and because it's my favorite, of course, that just tells you there that I love the ship. I think it's nearly perfect. One of the best cruise experiences that you can have. And this is because of the modern elegance, as I like to call it, that the Celebrity Apex has. You know, you walk on board and it's just your stunning art all around the ship. The entire ship itself actually looks like a piece of art. It's just amazing what they have done. These cruise ships, the Celebrity Apex, the Beyond and the Edge, and soon the Celebrity Ascent, which I will be on board, and we'll be reviewing that come December 2023. But all three of these ships cost north of $1 billion to build. So they put a lot of money, and they're not the biggest cruise ships in the world. Uh, some of them cost more than some of the biggest cruise ships in the world. But that just shows you the amount of detail and the amount of luxury that Celebrity has dedicated and invested in creating these ships. So I only mention the money component to say these are some of the best cruise ships that you can sell on. However, even being as great as the Apex is, still my favorite cruise ship, there were some issues that I need to tell you about this cruise. The biggest of those being with my Infinite brand. And If you've watched any of the vlogs that I've done from the Apex that are already out on the channel, you've already heard me talk quite a bit about the Infinite Veranda situation. First day, I noticed that the window would not come down in my Infinite Veranda. It appeared to be broken. I went down to guest services and explained to them. They called an electrician or someone up and they came. They claimed they fixed it. Well, they really didn't. I mean, they did fix it. It did work when they left, but it didn't permanently fix the issue because the next day, well, the same thing. I couldn't open the Infinite Veranda again. So I had to go back to guest services and talk to them. And I said, look, can you just move me? And even though I volunteered to move and kept my stuff packed, uh, didn't unpack any of my clothes, so probably the third day of the cruise, just in case I had to move because of the window, guest services 
continually, every time I asked, told me, no, you're, that's not necessary. You're not, we're not going to move you. You're going to be in this room. If it comes down to it and we don't get the problem fixed the second time we attempt it, then we'll actually come in and replace the window one day and you'll have to be out of the room for that. So even though I paid north of $6,000 to be in this stateroom, I went throughout most of the cruise with an infinite veranda that only worked some of the time because it remained broken. I actually figured out a little trick that I could do to get the window to work most of the time, uh, but it was still kind of frustrating that I did go and express to guest services and ask them if I could move. You know, I wasn't asking to be upgraded to a suite. I just asked to be moved down the hall a room or two down because I knew that those were empty and they indeed were but they had no interest in that. Another thing that was just okay with the ship that I'll talk about is the internet, because I feel like the internet's part of the ship infrastructure. And I don't really think this is the Apex's fault because, uh, you know, I've been on these ships before and the internet's been fine. I think it was just our position because we were over near Israel and they actually warned us we might experience some issues with the internet as we get closer to Israel, uh, just because we don't get as good satellite communication in that part of the world. So I understood that. But there were times it just seemed like, you know, the internet was overloaded with people. You could tell certain times a day it was a lot slower. Uh, a lot slower than I had experienced on celebrity cruise ships before. Now, of course, there were many more people on this cruise than there had been on my celebrity cruises I'd been on in the past. Now, there were only 1,900, and I say only because that's only about 60% capacity. And with the cruise before hours, they went to Israel also, and they had something like 70 to 80 percent capacity so i had expected you know somewhere in the 2000s i think the ship holds about a maximum of 3200 guests so 1900 wasn't as bad as i thought however it was the most amount of people that i'd ever experienced on a celebrity edge class ship but unfortunately you could see that impact on the internet speeds and i had the premium internet that's the fastest I upgraded and paid the extra amount to have the fastest internet and it worked most of the time but there were times when it was you know, very slow and that was kind of frustrating. One more thing that I'll say about the ship that I did notice this time because I do like to use the walking track and they have some of the best walking tracks I've experienced on a cruise ship on these edge class of ships because it actually starts uh, up on deck 16 and it actually weaves down to deck 15 and then there's a big bridge over the pool deck that takes it back up on deck 16. So it's actually a really cool walking track. However, because there were more people on this cruise, I noticed that on sea days especially, it was hard to walk. And I can only imagine if I were a jogger or a runner or someone trying to go fast around the walking track, it'd be aggravating because sometimes I would be walking, you know, pretty fast around through there, speed walking, uh, you know, trying to get a workout in and folks would just be all over the walking track because, you know, rightfully so, they're using it to uh, walk to uh, another part of the pool deck or another part of the ship or something. When you get up on deck 16, there's actually those big loungers on either side of the track. So of course there's people on either side of the track moving around. So that was one thing I noticed that was kind of like, oh, this is a little frustrating. I haven't noticed it before, but now that there are more people on the ship, you definitely notice things like that. That's one thing to keep in mind if you're a runner or a jogger from probably 11 in the morning to two in the afternoon or three in the afternoon. Do it early in the day or later in the evening because when there's a lot of people outside, you're gonna get slowed down. So, had I not had the issues with the infinite veranda, you probably would be hearing me give the ship a five star rating. I would've given it a five out of five. However, the issue with the infinite veranda, it really graded on me, you know, over the course of the cruise. And that wasn't great, especially spending so much money uh, to ultimately have an infinite veranda that's inoperable for a lot of the crew. So, because of that, the ship is only getting a four and it's still my favorite cruise ship at sea. So now we move on to the T and the T is for taste or food and y'all Celebrity Cruises has the best food at sea. I'll just say that right up front and get right into it. They have the best food at sea. I don't care if you're eating in the buffet, if you're getting a snack at Cafe El Bacho, if you're eating in a specialty restaurant, if you're eating in Lumine, which I did get to try this cruise for the first time ever you're gonna get great food, you're gonna get great service. And that's a great, one of the best things in my opinion about Celebrity Cruises is the food and the service. If, if I had to sum them up or state two of the best things about Celebrity Cruises, it would be food and service. They do food and service like no one else. And the food on Celebrity Apex was no exception. Now this cruise for me was a little bit different because when I sailed Celebrity Beyond and when I sailed Celebrity Edge, two out of my last three Celebrity Edge class experiences, I actually had Blue. Blue is a specialty restaurant for those guests staying either in suites or in aqua class. And because I wasn't staying in either of those this time, I was just relegated down to the lowly little four main dining rooms on board. And I say that as a joke because 
The four main dining rooms, which are Normandy, which are Cosmopolitan, Tuscan, and Cyprus, the four main dining rooms on Celebrity Apex are so delicious. And because we had 12 nights on this sailing, that gave me opportunity to go to each at least twice. But you're going to find exceptional dining no matter where you eat on board Celebrity Apex. Most of the nights on this cruise, I dined in the main dining room. It was always good food and good service. I think two or three of the nights, I just went to the buffet. And then two of the nights on board, I actually went to specialty dining. Now there are, I think, five or six specialty dining opportunities on board this ship. However, I've done most of those in past sailings on these Celebrity Edge class ships. So I just went to my favorite this time. And those two were Eden Restaurant and Rooftop Garden Grill. And Eden Restaurant has always been my favorite restaurant at sea. I've told everyone, if you go on an Edge class ship, you have to eat at Eden. It was much better the first time I went on Celebrity Apex, unfortunately. It just wasn't as good this time. I was, I was a little disappointed that it wasn't better. It wasn't the best meal I had on board this cruise, unfortunately, and I thought it would be. As I mentioned, I also ate at Rooftop Garden Grill, and this was a much better specialty dining uh, experience for me this cruise. I love Rooftop Garden Grill. I had never eaten there until I sold on Beyond a few months ago, but now I love it, and it's probably one of my favorite dining venues on Celebrity Cruises. I just love sitting outside. The night I went there, we were leaving Athens, Greece, and we were sailing away, it was almost sunset. The only downside to it is Rooftop Garden Grill is of course on the rooftop garden section of the ship and that's where they have a big screen where you can come and watch movies, sometimes they have sports. They generally always have something playing on that TV too. It can be pretty loud dining experience because there is, you know, you're sitting here and then right over here there's a big screen uh, with a sports game or movie or something going. So that's the only drawback, I guess, to dining at Rooftop Garden Grill. Also, the other drawback would be the temperature. If it's a cool night outside or if it's very windy, uh, you're going to feel that because you're eating outdoors. But other than that, a fantastic dining venue. The food was good, the service was good, and I highly enjoyed it. I also got to try out, thanks to one of you, Lumine. And Lumine is the special dining room reserved only for those guests who are staying in suites. And it's supposed to be some of the best food on board and I had a great experience. I got to eat there for dinner one night and I got to eat there for lunch the next day. And all the food that I had there was incredible. The service there is just top notch. Uh, some of the best servers that I've ever experienced on a cruise before. Highly enjoyed my experience at Lumine. One thing I wanna mention about food though while we're talking, cause I did get to meet so many people on board this cruise and you came up and talked to me and you shared about your cruise experience. And when folks come up to me on a cruise ship, I always try to say, how's your cruise going? I like to hear how folks are enjoying the ship, how they're enjoying the food. Uh, so thank you for always sharing with me. And I met a couple and they were telling me how great the gluten-free options were on board Celebrity Apex. They said they'd been on other cruise lines before and they'd never experienced so many options for gluten-free on board a cruise ship. So I just wanted to mention that. I, it wasn't anything I experienced myself, but from someone who uh, was restricted to a gluten-free diet, they said there was great availability on board Celebrity Apex. So. Uh, kudos to Celebrity Cruises for making, you know, food accessible to everyone on board their ships, regardless of dietary restrictions. And so for food on board Celebrity Apex this cruise, I give it a solid four out of five rating. So the E is for entertainment, and there was entertainment aplenty on board Celebrity Apex, as there always is on Celebrity Cruises. There was a show in the main theater each night, everything from a comedian. They had quite a few musicians on this cruise. Uh, they also had a, a few stage production shows throughout the cruise. The shows were typically at 7.30 in the evening and then again at 9.30 in the evening. And just depending on which time you went to dinner, you could then decide which show you wanted to go to. They also had shows uh, a lot of the nights, not every night, but in the club, they're on board the ship in that venue. They also had, uh, I think, three or four times... Uh, throughout the course of the cruise. They had some special theme night back in Eden. However, I had some really long days on this cruise. We were in port for, you know, 12 plus hour on tours. So I was always going to bed earlier than these shows back in Eden were starting because they wouldn't start till I think 10.30 or 10.45 in the evening when they were having these theme nights. So I didn't get to see any of those, but uh, from what I've heard from folks, those are really good. They of course always had music going in the atrium around the martini bar area. Folks were dancing, folks were having a great time. So a lot of entertainment options on board the ship. I will mention that it seemed like entertainment options were a little bit better the first half of the cruise. We had a comedian on board, he was great. Uh, they also had this band called Ukebox 
which I love. They performed two nights of the cruise and then they left about mid-cruise, but they were fantastic. They're from the UK and they were very entertaining. And I probably heard more about them from other cruisers, you know, just, oh, well, we really enjoyed that show. We really enjoyed that show than any other entertainment option on board the ship. So definitely check them out if they're gonna be on one of your future cruises with Celebrity. They also had movies up on the big screen in the rooftop garden area of the ship. Also in your stateroom on the big TV they have in the staterooms, they have movies on demand. However, I will say they had terrible choices. There were not just not that many choices on this cruise. The last couple of cruises I've gone on Celebrity Cruises, they've had a lot of options on that on-demand menu. Just not that many this cruise. One of the other things they did this cruise, because we were going to so many ports, so many historical ports, they did a behind the podium series. So each night, like say, we were gonna be in Athens tomorrow. So the night before at like 8.30, they would have a guest speaker in the club or in the main theater and he would be talking about the history of Athens, some of the cool things in the port area. He did a whole series on Jerusalem and Israel. Uh, I went to a couple of those and thoroughly enjoyed them. It was almost like being back in college and going to a college lecture before you actually got to the port itself, which I love because you just had so much more insight and so much more knowledge and history about the port before you ever even got there. So kudos to Celebrity for that. I enjoy stuff like that when you're going on a cruise. I mean, if I'm going to the Caribbean, you know, maybe not. But if I'm going to Europe or other places around the world where Celebrity sails and I'm going to these ports that I'll probably never go to again, I want to know stuff like that. I want to have more of these Beyond the Podium series because I really want to feel connected to the places that I'm visiting. This really helped me to do that. So I really enjoyed that. They also had a couple of talks with Alejandro. Alejandro was our cruise director. They had one talk with him about how living on a cruise ship was during the shutdown, during the global pandemic. And then another with him just about how it was uh, being a cruise director, what life was like. And then they did another comedy type show with him and the captain. I unfortunately didn't make that one and I hate that I didn't because so many people told me it was great. So I'm gonna give entertainment on board this 12 night voyage on Celebrity Apex a 4.5 out of a five rating. Entertainment on Celebrity Cruises, in my opinion, just cannot be beat. Moving on now to the P, the P is for ports and this is the star of the show because I don't care how much I love Celebrity Apex, I don't care how much you love Celebrity Cruises or how much you love the food or whatever, you were on board this cruise because of the ports because this was a very special sailing, only three times this entire year that Celebrity was cruising to Israel. So what a special sailing, what a special treat to get to go to Israel. Of course, it's why I booked the voyage. I actually booked this cruise uh, on my first Celebrity Apex sailing back in September of 2021 because I've always wanted to visit Israel and I'm like, this would be the perfect opportunity on a ship I love, on a with a cruise line I'm very familiar with, and with some other great ports as well. So the cruise itself left from Rome and we had a day at sea, and then we ended up in Olympia, was our first port of call. And then we were over in Athens, we were in Ephesus, Turkey, and then we hit Israel. And the first day, we were in the port of Haifa, which is in the northern portion of Israel, and we got to visit places like Nazareth and the Sea of Galilee. And then we left Haifa and went down to the port of Ashdod, and we're there for two days, and this is right near Jerusalem, so the first day I got to visit Jerusalem, got to visit Bethlehem, which is just near Jerusalem. And then the second day I got to go out and visit Masada and the Dead Sea, the Dead Sea being the lowest point on earth. So this was fantastic. And y'all, you're gonna wanna see these vlogs when they come out. They're gonna be hitting the channel throughout the month of December, 2022. So make sure that you go down below and subscribe because I have some very special content coming from Israel. Uh, it was such a, a great visit to that country, such a beautiful country, and one of the best places I've ever visited. So I can't wait until those hit the channel. So make sure you subscribe so that you can see that content uh, when it hits the channel very soon. And then we left Israel, uh, sadly, and ended up in Cyprus. And then we had two sea days on the way back to Rome. So a fantastic itinerary. And of course, most folks had booked the itinerary to go to Israel. All in all, it was four sea days and seven days in port. Uh, and I thought that was just perfect. I liked having the two sea days on the very back end of the cruise. A lot of people would ask me, you know, 12 days, isn't that too long? What did you think about 12 days? You know, how, how was that? And like I said, it was my first time being on a cruise this long. I think the longest I had done before this was 10 days. So 12 days was, it's a long cruise. You know, it's almost two whole weeks on board a cruise ship, but I loved it. I thought it was a perfect 
um, pace. It was a perfect amount of time. And it wasn't until the second to last sea day that I was like, okay, I'm about ready to go home. I've about had enough cruising. If you're on the fence or thinking about booking one of these longer voyages, I say go for it. Try it out and see if it's for you. You're going to get to see a lot of amazing ports when you do. Uh, because, you know, when you're on an almost two-week cruise, you can go to a lot of places. A lot more so than, you know, just a week-long seven-day cruise. So, of course, the only rating I can give the ports on this cruise, because it was a nearly perfect itinerary, is a perfect five out of five rating. Love this itinerary and love the ship that I was on. So, finally, the S for service or for crew. And I already said it. I think I spoiled it earlier. The service on Celebrity Cruises cannot be beat. And this was well proven on board Celebrity Apex. Some of the best crew I've ever sailed with. They're just fantastic. I don't care if you were at the cafe, one of the main dining rooms, all the way up to Lumine when I got to dine there those couple of nights. My room steward, he was fantastic. Always on top of it. Always just great conversation with him every day. One of the best room stewards that I've ever had in my 21 cruises. Here's a pro tip for you. I like to leave pro tips in my videos. Here's one for you. And I was telling a lot of people about this on board the ship because they were like, oh, I want to make sure that my room steward or my server at dinner get recognized because you know they send the survey around at the end of the cruise by email and ask you to fill that out well one thing i do to make sure that the folks get the recognition that they deserve if it's someone who does exceptional service and i'm like i want to write their name down i go into my phone and i keep a notes document all throughout the cruise and it's just by the time i get home it's just a list of names and i make sure when I fill out that survey that they send me when I get home from my cruise, that I list all those names and I tell what they did for me, why their service was exceptional above everyone else's. And this time I had a list longer than I've ever had before because that's how great the service was. So I am giving service on board the Celebrity Apex, of course, a solid five out of a five rating. Again, some of the best service I've ever received on a cruise. So that's all five of our steps and tallying all of those scores together, that brings the total score, my total rating for the Celebrity Apex, a 4.4 out of a five rating. That's pretty solid and I believe that's the highest I've ever given uh, in doing this now four or five cruise ships. I think that's the highest rating I've given and it just underscores that Celebrity Apex is my favorite cruise ship. If you have an opportunity to book Celebrity Apex, book it. It's a fantastic cruise ship. They got fantastic crew on board there. Some of the best food you're gonna eat at sea. Beautiful art all around the ship. And it's gonna take you to some pretty awesome destinations. So that's it. That is my official review of my 2022 Celebrity Apex Cruise experience. I wanna know down in the comments below, what do you think? Have you sailed the Apex before? Do you wanna sell the Apex? Yes, you do. Now that you've watched this video and you've heard me gush about how great it is. And then lastly, I wanna say a word to all of you I met, whether you're part of the crew or whether you were just a, a fellow guest like myself. Thank you so much. You made my cruise awesome. I met so many people. Just incredible some of the friendships that I made this cruise and I'm really grateful for that. Uh, so thank you if you came up and said hello. Thank you for coming up and telling me that you watch my videos. Y'all don't know how happy that makes me. Several people I met on board were like, I'm on this ship because of you, because I watched your videos before and I wanted to come try it out. So thank you for doing that and it was a pleasure to meet you. And if you're ever sailing with me, if you ever see me on a cruise ship, come say hello, come chat with me. Let's talk about the ship. I love talking about cruises. Of course, I do it every week here on YouTube. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it informed. If, if you did, do me a favor, go down below, give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any more of my cruise content that's soon to come. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you on the next adventure.